Greetings in IEOM. I am Martin Noronha from Mapua University and on behalf of my co-author, Cherry Mandal, who was a previous student of mine, will be presenting the study Recent Safety Assessment on the Production of Fire Workers in Bulacan, Philippines. Now, just to introduce, the New Year's Eve is a big thing in the Philippines. It is an age-old, deep-rooted tradition where firecrackers are lit up even in the streets okay, during the New Year's Eve. Now, the firecracker industry became a major okay, industry in the Philippines. There are 17 licensed manufacturers, okay, around 70 to 90 stores, earning between $3,000 to $5,000 or even higher a week before the New Year's Eve and became a good source of livelihood for the locality. Now that locality was uh, is 76 percent is home to the 76 percent of these manufacturers and no stores. Okay? Thus, Bukawi Bulacan, that locality was dubbed as the fireworks capital of the Philippines. Okay? Now the context of the study came to be with what was mentioned earlier: the fireworks industry being a major industry in the Philippines. Firecracker production was focused mainly on low cost operations, and production workers in the firecracker um, industry were all season, are all season skilled but without training in safety and risk enhancers. Working conditions yeah, that were observed were much to be desired vis a vis other manufacturing firms, came, mainly due to the nature of the explosive materials and the manual based work. That so uh, let me just go over the over, uh, an overview of the firecracker production from raw materials to grinding, drying, mixing, preparation, checking, uh, random testing, and then packaging before it goes to the stores. The making process flowchart will, as shown, have color-coded processes, but they all point to uh, risks and hazards as shown accordingly. So just a redefinition of terms, so these hazards present risks and the study focuses on identifying what these risks are, okay? examples of which are also shown on this slide. So this study actually was uh, made possible with this adage. They were willing to work all the time and when people did their best, ought they not to be able to keep alive. So with this, the questions okay, were raised. One, what significant factors affect the environment, the work environment, safety and health of the fire crackers, production workers? Two, which of these identified risks are most likely to happen and most severe? And lastly, what measures must be developed to prevent and or mitigate this risk? Thus, the research study aims to assess the current production process in making fire crackers in that locality to determine the significant factors affecting the health and safety of firecracker production workers and lastly to recommend preventive and mitigating measures to improve those working conditions. Okay. So the study's theoretical framework is really based on the ISO 31000 standard as shown, so identification of risk factors then an analysis of those factors to be able to assess and prioritize, which will lead to the formulation of preventive and mitigation programs. Okay. The methodology of the study, okay. uh, the scope first is in Bukhabi Bulacan, okay, which was a sufficient source of data and information by way of interviews and survey questionnaires. The respondents of the study include direct labor factory workers, owners and operators from said industry. Sample size was identified considering that there were only a few factories numbering 17. So descriptive statistics will profile the respondents and observations were also done okay, to augment the triangulation approach adopted by this study. Okay. So the conceptual framework okay, would show that the logic of the study is first to determine the major factors okay, that will lead to understanding of the risk, primarily 
how they are related to the perceptions of workers and owners as regards risk that will eventually uh, be the basis for assessment and prioritization. The results of that, of course, will be the formulation of recent programs. Now, um, hypothesis testing will be used in determining if there is a significant difference among the factors that were included in the study, as well as a logistics regression equation so that the sub-factors can also be looked into. Okay. So the operational framework included nine sub-factors or indicators okay, for the first management-related factor and then for each to the physical environment and the worker-related factors and then six sub-factors for the operations. So all of which will be included in determining the risk perceptions. Now, the profile of the respondents, 77% okay, uh, were male, and then around 79% were between 26 to 50 years old, and then 78% with at least four years of experience, and 97% of the respondents coming from the direct labor. So, the results are as follows. So the conduct of one-way analysis of variance really still resulted in having this uh, the significant factors of management, physical, and operation. Okay? And the implication is that the perceptions of respondents to these sub-factors are different. Thus, they will be treated differently, separately, under each of the factors, management, physical, and operation. The sub-factors under the worker-related factor are treated as one since the responses do not have significant differences. So going over these factors, okay, so there were one, two, three, four, five, so five sub-factors or indicator variables that were, that yielded the value of more than one okay, in the computation of an odds ratio and this will show that the effect of the perception of workers to safety will be great. Okay? Meaning to say, if they are present in a factory setting, then the odds of workers seeing the factory as safe increases multiplicatively by those numbers. In physical, okay, three out of four variables yielded the value of more than one. Hence, again, the perception, okay, if this uh, sub-factors are present in a factory, then the safety okay, uh, perception will increase multiplicatively. So under the worker-related uh, factors, none of them yielded values greater than one. Uh, this can be partly explained by how well these workers are experienced, their season, Hence, the, the responses to questionnaires under this factor did not result into significance. Okay? Unlike in operations, okay, 4 out of 6 yielded greater than 1 values. Okay? Hence, the perception increases okay, with these factors around them that the environment will be safe. Now, making use of this matrix, the risk response chart, uh, the risk prioritization can be quantitatively done, okay, as shown. Now, results of this analysis show that grinding and mixing okay, have the highest uh, risk priority, uh, reaching 500. And recommended measures, among others, okay, are as shown. So tools and jigs will really help a lot in the conduct of the report. Okay? An alternative me um, material for the metal tools will also greatly help, and as well as inspecting the tool at the end of the shift. Okay? So in the mixing operations, labeling for chemicals, maybe as well for tools, will help a lot. And workers, though they are seasoned, it would require retraining. So bringing in these mitigating factors as well as preventive measures 
Okay. Not only for grinding and mixing, but also considering the other uh, sub-factors in the other processes, then the average percent RPN reduction will be around 89.21. Okay. So, in closing, I, I would like to um, make mention that the research questions were addressed and the objectives of the study were met specifically in assessing the firecracker production process and determining the significant force affecting this process, okay. so which greatly helped in prioritizing the risks so that the um, mitigating and preventive measures uh, could have be formulated accordingly. Okay. So most of these were obtained from the results of the analysis and furthermore, to prevent and mitigate the risks that were identified, hazard controls okay, should be in place, okay, thereby it can drastically reduce the chance of risks, okay, including engineering controls, okay, work practices, looking forward, administrative controls, and the use of PPE. Okay, so I'd like to go back to the adage, they were willing to work all the time, and when people did their best, but they not to be able to keep alive. Yes, we need to keep them alive as this is a major industry in the Philippines. And with that, I thank you.